Hi guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to be doing for the most part examples with the roles that each user has, the three users that we created, one that has all the roles, one that has only admin and the other one only public. So we're going to be demonstrating that the JWT token works just like expected and it also uses the information that it's that it contains like the roles okay so I'm going to start I already put it in a poll actually because YouTube doesn't let you put annotations anymore so I put it in a poll and for the ones that didn't see it in the authentication filter I did a tiny mistake and it's the mistake right here so instead of get localized message just put get message I don't know if it really makes a difference if it maybe it it, it gets you uh, an, an error or something for no pointer exception or something but with X with X with the variable X that get message it will just give you the first message that it encounters as an exception if an exception happens here like I already explained to you okay so that was the first thing that we're going to be doing and I also made some new classes that I'm going to go through it and explain it to you the first one is the existing night handler it is a custom one so this class is going to be used when there's a forbidden error in your application and in the cases that we're going to be seeing is when the user doesn't have the admin role it's he's going to be authenticated so it's not a 401 error but a 403 error so you don't have the permission to view it that content okay and also we will see later on when the csrf is not um, provided you will also get a forbidden error okay so i will go through this implementation so like you know that component to make spring boot um pick it up when he scans like you already know we need an object mapper that writes to the response and this I want to make it this to make it better and you also have the default constructor like always and there's this interface only has one method that means handle that is handle and in this um, handle method we set the content type again to JSON because we're only working with JSON response and also the value forbidden in this case because it's not that you're not authorized so it's not that you're not logged in but you don't have permission you don't have sufficient access to view the specific content and this mapper again to write the response with the writer and using the error response class and yeah you know this tiny little message that's user friendly there's also one other new thing that I added that's of course the new error port for the forbidden resource okay so the other one is when you make this custom deny the access handler you also have to register it in the authentication config so you auto wired it here as an attribute and you use it by doing by um, providing it with the exception handling here so just this two lines of code is added um, as new code in this configuration so an end and the exception handler you have the access denied handler now and you provide the custom one that we just created here okay so for every forbidden error that spring security throws is going to go through this 
um, custom class okay so the other things that I already added for testing is the all the URLs that we're going to be using to test the specific roles and also the working of the CSRF protection okay so um, I think let's begin and probably you're also wondering why did we create the enumer enumeration role so this enumeration enumeration oh my god sorry enumeration role is going to be used in the conflict so when we're trying to secure these endpoints we're going to be using these roles to say to certain security okay so if you see this person that has the role public you can grant him access to this specific endpoint okay and also yeah the we inserted three users and we only used one until now but now we're going to be using all three of them okay and also all the roles in the database okay so i'm going to explain this one so you know that the end matchers is for saying to spring i want this endpoint to be handled by you and i want either permit all or i want it to have an authority or i want it to be just authenticated without any um, permission needed so the first one that we need is the csrf token so if it's a post and it goes to this endpoint you will allow all requests without authentication needed the other one is a get and this is only for admins so if the user doesn't have a role that's that is equal to admin you you will access the night that user otherwise you just grant access to the content that he's requesting and this is the same for public we're using the role public here and this one is an endpoint that if the user has a role that is admin or a role that is public or it has both of them it, it's going to grant this user access if he doesn't have any that is any of the roles that is listed here then the access will be denied okay so let's begin testing first I'm going to show you the CSRF protection so let's go so um, let's go to the controller and you see that we have to use this endpoint to see if the CSRF protection is going is is being executed okay so let's go to postman and then the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be just making a, a random request to this um, API so we can get oh sorry I didn't run the application okay so let's run it wait 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 don't go away okay we're back um yes so just a random request so we can get the CSRF token here just right here and now we're going to be testing the CSRF um, um, protection so without the to this token there's going to be an access denied error because you're not sending the CSRF token while using a post method and going to this user and this end endpoint so let's try it so I can show you and as you can see this resource is forbidden because you are not sending the X the CSRF token it has nothing to do with permission because as you can see here for this endpoint it permits all it has to do with that the user is not sending the CSRF token once I put the CSRF token, you're going to see that it's going to return you the content. I'm going to show you the custom and access denied message, so you can see that it's going, it's using this handler 
for the night errors okay so right now we're going to you using the header so we're going to put this header is exactly as this name because we're using the this type of cookie um this type of C SRF token repository that expects a header that is named like this okay so let's provide that one and we're going to try this one more time so we can get the updated one if it changes and then we're going to put this right here in the value um, column yes so right now we're going to make the request again and you're going to see it's a successful request so all success and once we remove it again disable it it's going to give you the same error okay so we, right now we know that CSRF is working okay so the next step is to show you the roles that Spring Security is actually seeing and handling the roles of the user and depending on the, what the roles of the user are it's granting access or denying access so let's begin with actually um, logging in so HTTP local host port 8080 if you have another port you can you have to put it here and then log in so remember if this is a post put or delete or mm, I, I have knowledge of those three you have to put this CSRF token with get request is not necessary so just let's just make sure that it's the same one and let's put it in the XSRF header as you can see here is the body and first I'm going to show you the user which has all the all the roles and this user has access to all the content um, to all the endpoints that we declared in the controller where are you um, here because the user has public and it has admin and this one doesn't need any roles um actually it does it, it needs um either one of them so because we only have two okay so now we're going to try to authenticate um i'm going to show you before authentication if you try to access this url before authentication it's going to give you the access denied error no the unauthorized because you're not logged in okay once we log in it's that error is going to go away of course so let's try to log in as you can see it says invalid username or password so something is wrong here I, I think it's supposed to be hello and not user so let's try again and it goes okay so let's copy paste this again because postman apparently it was not an issue or a bug but do you remember that we set the, the the this cookie to secure so if you don't have if you don't send over a https connection it won't send the cookie so that is working perfectly and we don't have https here because i'm just using the locals on http instead i'm going to just name the header here as a cookie and apparently it works so a cookie and then the whole cookie here and the cookie name before it so GWT is that one okay so right now when we have public remember that this user has access to all the endpoints so it's going to give you the content and for a get request we don't need to send the CSRF token in the header so you can as you can see we have access public success also for admin the same thing because it has both roles and also for the other endpoint which needs either admin or role okay so that's for this user let's try with other users 
um, let's log in with first admin and remember to get the latest access x csrf token and put it in the header and then try to log in again once you log in you copy paste this code again and you post it you can put it here because this is the old um, JWT token, this is the new one for the admin. So one now, when we go to admin, you will again see that it goes through because this is the user that only has the admin role. So you see admin success, but as soon as you go to public, it will get it will give you access tonight because this endpoint is only for public and there's no admins are allowed here. You see, it gets you 403 error. And you are apparently locked in. You see, all the cookies are there, so everything is okay. It's working just like expected. And if you go here, it should also give you access to the content because you're an admin. Okay, and the same way we're going to try for the users, for the ones that are not convinced yet. So public, public now, and then remember to get the latest token. Mm. Yes, this one. And put it in, um, wait, login, yes, put it right here. So now we have the public public and we're going to be locked in again and we're going to copy paste the new token and putting it here again to get to the GWT. So GWT as you know is going to get access because it has a row that is public then we're going to be trying the admin but for the admin it's going to give you the access denied error because this endpoint only is only accessible to admins and not the public as you can see it works like expected and the endpoint public it will give you access because yeah, it's public okay so yeah everything seems to be working just like expected one thing I forgot to show you is the token itself and all the information. So this username is public and it only has roles public. And remember, this is the name that we put in the JWT property file. Uh, so yeah, and so you can also check on your own browser for the other users. That is going to be for the admin, admin here and admin here. And the user you already saw in one of the previous videos, which has both roles. Okay, so that was it for the whole tutorial. Everything is working. I hope you understood everything. Thank you for all your attention. I know the videos was pretty long, but I'm a person that tends to give a lot of details. And uh, yeah, so you can understand better and. If you have any questions just put it in the comments and also if you want me to do the same JWT authentication but with the authorization header instead of cookie based just leave it in the comments and I will do it as soon as possible thank you for listening bye bye till the next video